Okay, without further ado, and I probably forgot some stuff, I'll try to catch it up at the end. This is Captain John DeLue. He is the Managing Director of Safety and Efficiency. Thank you for putting that up there. <laughs> and uh, that's known to us as Fuqua, or Fuqua, however you want to. Uh, that's what I knew it as. And so, uh, without further ado, Captain John DeLue. a little bit more than folk by actually we'll get into that um, so you know they always have a day like national grandparents day and you know national you know childhood day do you all know what today is it's not on your phone no it's a true day today is actually world pilots day it is really i'm not i'm not kidding you it really is world pilots day so i thought that was ironic that you had the gray eagles today on world pilots day great trip great Bad plan. marketing on my part. Yeah, yeah, it is actually World Pilots Day. So, um, all right, well, thank you very much. Uh, as um, Alan mentioned, thanks for the intro. Uh, I'm the, currently the Managing Director of Safety and Efficiency in America, which I absolutely like my job. I'm also a 787 captain. And uh, so before I go into I'd like to recognize a few people. So Lisa Johnson here, Captain Johnson, she's on the 73. She's on my team. And I had her come here to, uh, for support, of course. But I'm going to talk about our safety programs at American Airlines. And we have, we have the world famous safety team. But not because of me. A lot of us are here, Lisa, myself, we've been here years. But in the group here, we have some people who actually were the fathers of a lot of these programs. So I, I can't talk here first without recognizing them. So Rich Cunningham is over here. Rich, please raise his hand. John Bendebenner, Jay Pellicone, we've got Mike McGinnis over here. Greg Holm is over here. Languling, of course, and if you don't recognize his names, you should know that because everything I'm talking about today was built on the process they started. Rich, for sure, on ASAP, and John, got a huge history here, so it's kind of nice to be in the room with some of the old safety folks here. Uh, all right, so before I start that, I have a question for you. So it's already World Pilots Day. Since this is the Gray Eagles, what is the oldest airport in the world? Does anybody know what the oldest airport is in the world? Still, it's been co it's continuous airport the entire time. San Diego. Nope, it is College Park Airport in Maryland, which Wilbur Wright started. The University of Maryland? Well, just College Park, Maryland, that's all I know. It's it's a public airport. It's the oldest continuing operating airport in the world. Just a little bit of trivia. How about what is the oldest continuous airport that has tickets and commercial flying? Anybody know? That might be a picture. If you don't know, it's actually Hamburg, Germany. It's the oldest continuous operating commercial airport. But if you read it, it's got terminal planes established in 1911. So while America was building its aviation suit airplanes, what did Germany have? The Zeppelins. So that's why they're the oldest continuous airport in the world. All right, a little bit of trivia, kind of get you, you know, the great eagle blood flowing here. Um, all right, so safety. So American Airlines, we are, as you know, all of you have been here, our legacy is built on what most of you in the room have done. We have this commitment to safety, and I've always asked the, uh, the new hire pilots, and uh, I asked the captains, you know, do you tell your friends and your neighbors not to fly in American Airlines because of safety? Of course we don't. Nobody in the room does this. So we're committed to safety at this airline. I think we have a long history of it. We're proud of it. And these are some of the programs that Alan was starting to mention before he got off the stage. You've got ASAP, FOQA. Some of you know about the LOSA program but we certainly have a new program called LIT. So I'll spend a little time on each one, give you some cool pictures and uh, some examples, and uh, at the end we'll you know, take some questions on it. So our ASAP program has been around. We are the oldest ASAP program in the industry, started in 1993-94, uh, the flight ASAP program. Folks like Rich and John were involved with that. Um, and we're the most, uh, I would say, the most advanced ASAP program too. So this is the world we live in, and this is now. This is not you know, pre-COVID, this is post-COVID. And you know, as you can tell, if you fly in our aircraft, you're pretty busy. So there's a lot of opportunities for our ASAP reports. Just so you know, we get about 800 flight ASAP reports a month on the average. So that, that's a lot. And we don't advertise ASAP like they did 20 years ago, because business is pretty good, actually. So we have plenty of our pilots. They're glad to report the ASAP. It protects their certificate. We have no more can't get company discipline if you're accepting the program. So we've got a great culture of doing that. That ASAP that was started years ago in flight has morphed over to the dispatch program, which is also quite uh, advanced. But we have a cabin ASAP program, we've got tech ops ASAP, we've got central load planning ASAP, 
and the latest and greatest was our ground ASAP program, which we call GSAP. So all of those managers work for Rusty Pruitt, who works for me. They all sit in the same area. They get to communicate every day, so they don't pick up the phone and call. And that's how we share the hazards in our industry, in our airline, and uh, try to fix it and mitigate these uh, hazards, depending on the risk. Uh, note just a couple slides here. John, no pictures here.